and you're in from our studios on MDI Road. This is the news, but first the headlines. From the despair of barrenness to the joy of parenthood, women who underwent President Jami's infertility treatment rejoice over their newfound status in society thanks to the successes of the government leaders' alternative treatment program. Ruling party supporters in the West Coast region settlement of Sukuta reaffirmed their loyalty to the party leadership at a mass rally held in the neighborhood of Medina. North Korea hails its latest launch of a long-range rocket, but no one in the Western capitals is smiling amid widespread condemnation of Pyongyang for its latest transgression. And third time lucky, Gambia's top golfer Fakeba Drame leads his fellow professionals to a clean sweep of the major awards in the just ended Qatar Embassy sponsored golf championship. Well, viewers, this is another story coming ahead this half hour. I am your presenter, Helen Gite. <laughs> Welcome back. It has been years since the Gambian leader announced a cure for infertility, a condition which affects thousands of women. The announcement got a mixed reaction from both women who endured decades of married lives without children and detractors who dismissed the president's treatment as fake. Momonu Jalo visited one woman who underwent the infertility treatment and reports on an experience that has given her a new life after 10 years without a child. Of three, two healthy sons and a daughter who are the joy of her life. But Lolly has come a long way to her newfound happiness, which on the outside is conspicuously noticeable. But inside her, the memories of a troubled life are still fresh as she recalls those difficult days more than 10 years ago when she looked forward to her own child. As the years piled up, she became increasingly frustrated and resorted to desperate means. Lolly would visit every marabout she heard of paying thousands of dollars to cure her infertility. infertility for any married woman, the lack of a child could be a traumatic experience, as is often blamed by family members and in-laws as an omen of bad luck. Many of these women are sometimes subjected to psychological, verbal, and physical abuse. But the start of the president's infertility treatment way back in 2007 gave new life to most of these women who had lost any hope of getting a child. The president launched the treatment program for infertility, and thousands of women like Lolly registered. Soon, many of them saw the results as they conceived. For Lolly, this was the happiest moment of her life, as he could not believe it. I feel very proud. I have smiling face. Smiling face, Len. I'm in your content. Mane la suma bima umbi, benya dama umba. Mane umba yuna mawa. Mane la umba yuna mawa yuna ma danganyo bokonos. Doctor Bidaf Masir, ma yuna ma danga umba yangi three months. Three months joy. She got the first, then a second, and later a third child, something that makes the treatment safe, effective, and reliable beyond any reasonable doubt. As he looks forward to the future, Lolly cannot thank the president enough. For those women like her, Professor Jamie's treatment gave them a new life in their matrimonial homes. This is also true for the children who continue to benefit from free medical care courtesy of President Jame. The president's alternative treatment program recently celebrated its ninth anniversary at a grand ceremony in Kanilai, where thousands of people who benefited from the treatment of several diseases, such as HIV, AIDS, diabetes, asthma and hypertension gather to take stock of the breakthrough achievements. With so much achieved against all odds, the president has signaled his intention to take on even greater challenges 
suggestive treatment of various types of cancers. Mamoru Jaro, GRTS News. What an inspiring story and a very happy mother and dad. The APRC wing of San Mentero in the Combo North District West Coast region has received a brand new motorbike meant to complement the party's activities in the area. The motorcycle was donated to the party by one Mohammed Jabi, a resident of Sukuta Medina and a staring supporter of the ruling party. Jayatesis Ibrahim Jalo was at the handing over ceremony which culminated into a rally and felt in this report. Mutant gathered to witness the presentation of a brand new motorbike, courtesy of one Mohammed Jabi, an influential and long standing supporter of the ruling party. The donation, according to Jabi, is anchored on the spirit of patriotism, citing numerous development initiatives in the country since the advent of President Jame's government. We are made to understand this 2016, this San Mentoring consequency. What we need, or what they actually need as of now, they need mobility for the campaign for the APRC. And this is why I personally, together with the community people, bought this brand new motorbike for the San Mentoring APRC um, executive for them to be using it to facilitate the campaign for the next camp uh, election that is coming. The donor while expressing appreciation to the development brought to his community by the APRC regime, also appealed for assistance to improve the condition of the community's women garden. I think if His Excellency the President of the Republic of the Gambia should understand that this big garden, the women walking there is more than maybe 500 to 600 to 700 women are walking there, but the garden is not yet fenced. And the other constraint is in the community here, water is a problem. Few people are having it. But we just want Navek to come to lay the main pipes. Individual people can connect it from the road or from the highway get to their compounds. And if you look at Nemasu too, Nemasu also is, is part of this community here. Nemasu also, they only have water, you know, high pressure during the night, but during the day, they can't get access to water. That's a major concern also here. The motorbike, which number plates acronym translate to San One, was handed to the district through the Paramount Chief, Demba Sanyang. Chief Sanyang commended Jabi for the move, while acknowledging his contribution to the advancement of the party that continues to bring life-changing developments to the doorstep of Gambians. The Paramount Chief went on calling Gambians to remain united and ensure the greatest victory for President Jame in the upcoming presidential polls. The mass rally was said to be the start of campaign rallies in the area, attracting dozens of APRC militants, including senior national women mobilizer Ajande Jata, alcoholists and chiefs from across West Coast region and beyond. Ibrahim Ajalo, GRTS News. He has organized a day validation seminar of the Environment Management Plan for the Gambia Commercial Agriculture and Value Chain Management Project. The project is being funded by the World Bank and implemented by the Ministry of Agriculture. And as we hear in this report by Isaac Rijata, it is anchored on improving production and access to market for the targeted agricultural commodities. This forum organized by the National Environment Agency and partners is anchored on improving food production and by extension quality livelihood in local communities. The NEA is mandated to provide guidelines for development activities in order to minimize the environmental impact of such development. In this regard, the NEA in consultation with the project management and the consultant work to ensure that Environmental Management Plan, ESMP, was developed, which could ensure that the environmental concerns associated with the project development are addressed. The preparation of this ESMP is in line with the Gambia Vision 2020. The Environment Management Plan, according to Suare, aims at integrating environment and social issues of this project with existing programs, activities, and other components of the project, which he said is meant to promote overall improvement of development through effective coordination and implementation of the mitigated measures in a timely manner. This will ensure that problems are recognized at an early stage and remedial mitigation works or procedures are implemented before irreparable damages occurs. 
I wish to take this opportunity to tax you to critically look at the document, make the necessary comments for its finalization. Please be reminded that ESMP should not be compromised because they serve as a guiding tool on social safeguards, which is of great interest to the beneficiaries and the state as a whole. These are perimeters that have been put under irrigation before, be it the uh, small-scale water management uh, project or the farmer-managed rice irrigation project, both of which had ESMP plans. But the question is, have the plans that were drawn for those perimeters been fully and properly implemented? We need to know that we are in an era of climate change. Nobody needs to be given a lesson on the issues surrounding climate change in this day and age and its implications on our agricultural practices. For Mumurumbai Jaba, the project is important for the country's agricultural development. He, however, urged the participants and experts to do more towards achieving a sustainable project. And you know what makes this 21 vegetable gardens unique? It is the first time in, our agriculture, in an agricultural development project where you have, you have 21 gardens going to be fitted with drip irrigation pipes. Mind you, the same NEA is very alert and has already banned plastic bags in this country. And now, for us to be able to increase our agricultural production and productivity, especially in the horticulture sector, we want to explore a production pattern and technology that has not been proliferated at the local level before. Now, can you imagine 21 gardens fitted with pipes all over this country? What do we need to do to make sure that there are environmental safeguards put in place so that five, ten years down the line, you don't go to Pakaliba and you find there are goats and cows eating drip irrigation pipes? Mr. Malikba of National Environment Agency in his presentation deliberated on issues of environmental impact assessment in the Gambia. This project is set to be implemented in 29 farming communities, 21 of which will be vegetable garden sites, and eight tidal rice irrigation sites in North Bank region, Central River region North, Central region South, and the West Coast region. Aisatu Jata, GRTS. Mariana Law Basic School has recently been posted with the donation of furniture meant to aid in the proper functioning of the school by keeping the pupils comfortable in class. The donation by a UK-based charitable foundation dubbed Project Gambia was presented to the school through the village Alcalo. Ibrahim Jalo has more on that story. This is the latest in a series of interventions by Project Gambia, a charitable foundation initiated by a British couple with a view to supporting the poor and less privileged people in society. The foundation has over the years supported a lot of development initiatives in both rural and urban communities, covering critical areas such as education, health, agriculture, among others. We have put money into all areas of the Gambian economy. Um, education, of course, is a priority area. And uh, from education, we put some money into horticulture because we started a garden project in Sintu village. And uh, from there, we put some money into health because we bought some medical equipment and medicines to upgrade a health centre in Carnegie. But also, we bought some solar lamps. This is for community development. And we supplied some villages. We supplied and this is to reduce the risk of fire incidents and also the re 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 reduce the risk of people catching respiratory problems due to you know, smoke from paraffin lamps and candles. But also it's cost free. So we're actually doing a lot in Gambia. The headmaster of the school, Asan Choi, spoke of his delight at the news of the donation. When I took over the school in 2013, furniture was my main problem. I found out that five to six kids were sitting on a bench, but today, today, I'm very happy. <laughs> so 306 
264 tables that they brought has enabled us, the children, to sit one at a chair. The school head boy Umar Dabo delivered a speech on behalf of his colleagues, acknowledging the receipt of the aid and how much it will help improve their education. I hereby acknowledge the receipt of 150 tables and 316 chairs from Whitfield Primary School, UK, through Project Gambia, the Gowood High School in UK. They are very valuable materials that all the community and the school demand is necessary. The furniture numbering 164 tables and 374 chairs we are presented to the school through the village Alcalo, Musamane, who equally thanked the donors for the assistance. The donors also vowed to fence the community garden and build a market for them as part of its future programs. Ibrahim Ajalo, GRTS News. You're watching GRTS News in time now for our first break. We'll be right back with news from outside the Gambia. Do stay tuned. The APRC Peace and Law Fundraising Galadina is here again. Yes, the Party of Peace, Progress and One Dog brings you Valentine's Gala Dinner. Under the chief patronage of His Excellency Chef Professor Dr. Haji Yahya AJJ Jame Babili Mansa, President of the Gambia and APRC Party Chairman, the Alliance for Patriotic Reorientation and Construction, APRC, invites you to its Grand Peace and Law Fundraising Gala Dinner happening on Saturday, 13 February 2016. Venue is at the Senegambe Beach Hotel, commencing at 8 p.m. It is a night of excellence and style. Artists performing include Jaliba Kuyate and Kumareban, Jalikeba Kuyate, Usunjai Senior, Abu Anfafa, and Bai Babu. Enjoy Valentine's with the APRC with one love and one heart. For more information, call 3319744 or 4496968. Welcome back. North Korea's launch of a rocket has triggered an avalanche of criticism from the international community. The United Nations Security Council convened an emergency session today to discuss the launch. Many view the rocket launch as a front for a ballistic missile test. We have details in this report. A bold move came on the eve of the Lunar New Year, the most important holiday in Beijing. It adds a layer of insult toward North Korea's longest standing ally. There is reaction from officials in Beijing. They now say they regret North Korea's decision to use ballistic missile technology in its launch, a clear violation of UN sanctions. The provocations from Pyongyang keep coming. First an H-bomb test, now a rocket launch viewed as a ballistic missile test. Enough for a senior Chinese official to make a recent trip to the tiny hermit kingdom to call for restraint. But when he returned to China, he seemed resigned. I said all I had to say and did all I had to do. I don't know what the outcomes would be at present. The Chinese have more leverage here than any other country, sharing nearly all of North Korea's northern border. They're the country's largest trading partner and its biggest international investor. The U.S. believes a tighter squeeze on the North Korean economy could force cooperation. With all due respect, more significant and impactful sanctions were put in place against Iran, which did not have a nuclear weapon, then against North Korea, which does. For its part, China has backed recent UN sanctions against the country, targeting military weapons, luxury goods, and technology. But normal trade with China continues largely unaffected. With the risk of the economic collapse of a neighboring country in the balance, China cautions against taking sanctions too far. Sanctions are not an end in themselves. The critical thing is to achieve a resolution of the issue. China will act in a responsible manner. In the meantime, we must point out that the new resolution should not provoke tensions that destabilize the Korean Peninsula, rather push towards the goal which is negotiation. There are mounting signs of a cooling relationship between North Korea and historically its biggest supporter. China is not in the positions to support 
one regime or topple one regime. After North Korea's most recent nuclear test, China's President Xi Jinping spoke by phone with South Korea's President Park Geun-hye and U.S. President Barack Obama. President Xi has never met with Kim Jong-un in the four years since North Korea's dictator came to power. As the fighting intensifies in and around the Syrian city of Aleppo, the UN reports that more than 40,000 people have been displaced by the war. While the Syrian army advances on rebel areas in the old city, thousands of civilians are or have managed to flee the city are camped along the border with Turkey struggling to cross into the country. CNN's Arwa Demon has more on that story. It's not, Hannah, not at this stage. You will see some truck traffic going on behind us, but that is just about it. The border is closed, despite the fact that Turkish authorities continue to maintain that they still have an open-door policy when it comes to allowing Syrian refugees through. Now, that being said, they are letting em emergency cases uh, to cross, but that's about it. And there are varying estimates, but upwards of 10,000 people are believed to be just on the other side of this particular border crossings, with thousands of others scattered throughout the countryside up against the Turkish border, waiting and hoping that authorities will let them through. Now. Turkish uh, officials are saying that at this point they don't believe that they need to let these refugees through because they say that they are being provided for on the other side with some Turkish aid organizations going through, setting up tents and providing food and water. But we spoke to a number of Syrians who are stuck on the other side and they say that the aid that they have received quite simply is not enough. It is bitterly cold and the tents that have been set up do not provide them with any warmth. They don't have blankets. They don't have anything to sleep on. And they say that the food supplies that are being sent over are not enough to feed everyone who is stuck there. And people are understandably very angry and very confused because they feel already as if they have been abandoned on every single level, and now their only escape to safety is at this stage being shut off to them as well. And the European Union has come out urging Turkey to open up its borders, but again, as we have been saying, at this stage, this does remain very closed. We take our second break now. Up next, a look at the sports news and how the tiger remained untouchable on the Fajara golf course. Don't go away. Great. Welcome back. And after having an uncharacteristic slow start to the Qatari Embassy-sponsored golf championship, Gambia's top golfer, Fakeba Drame, stomped back to beat his nearest challenges. One-time winner, Dudu Gassama, and now another leading pretender to his crown, Yusuf Atamba, to the championship scoring three under power, 136. It turned out to be business as usual for Tiger, but he was taken right down to the wire. Albab Gosengo takes us through that exciting finale on the Fajara golf course. Gambia's top golfers have concluded play in the annual Qatar embassy-sponsored golf tournament at the Fajara golf course. The local professional field had to contend with the challenge of a group of professionals from Senegal and Sweden who are aiming to scoop the top prizes on offer. The various competing groups of professional golfers helped on by experienced caddies and muscles who have been actively tallying the points and ensuring fair play fun across the concourse of this golf course early Saturday morning after teeing off in pretty fine weather conditions. Among the leading contenders here is this man. Fresh from his return from the United States, Bakeba Drami, or Tiger, is hoping to secure top spot on the leaderboard. The tournament, which is in its third successive year, is drawing more participants and growing in scope. 
that it has become a permanent fixture on the Gambia sporting calendar. Organized by the Qatari Embassy in Banjo, the golf tournament is meant to celebrate the National Sports Day of the state of Qatar. On Sunday, attention shifted to the amateurs who also competed to find a winner in that category. And after what was a grueling two days on the famous golf course, participants joined by top diplomats from the embassies of Turkey and Britain, as well as two cabinet ministers attended the luncheon meant to celebrate the end of the championship. Uh, it's been a fantastic uh, tournament. Uh, this is our third Qatar Cup. Uh, I was captain for the first two. Uh, so this one has exceeded the first two and it gets better and better. And um, we have to thank His Excellency Mohammed al Kabi for his very generous sponsorship. Fajara Golf Club and the Qatari Embassy sponsored tournament have struck a very fruitful partnership which has been held by officials who graced the cocktail reception. I think it's a very important development, um, having uh, the Qataris uh, golf tournament yearly mm -hmm. for the past three years, the tournament has been going on mm -hmm. very successfully. Uh, this is uh, what we are looking for as an Olympic committee, try to organize championship for Gambians athletes mm -hmm. in all of our sports we had, because it's more important things uh, to organize competing. If you are not competing, uh, the future is not, is, not, is not good. Time, the Qatar Cup is being played in, in the Gambia, and every year it's uh, grown bigger and bigger. I mean, we welcome any any event of this sort um, in golf and beyond because it encourages both the professionals and the amateurs to do more, to come out and it keeps the game alive as well. When attention finally shifted to the awarding of prizes, there weren't any surprises as to who finishes top on the leaderboard. Gambia's top professional golfer was the man of the moment. I can't remember the last time I came from behind to win a golf tournament. Usually uh, I take the lead, I never look back, yeah, but uh, I'm really pleased uh, that I came from behind. Two of our toughest contenders, Yusufa and uh, Dudu, ahead of me to be able to uh, overcome them and win this uh, tournament for the third time. Does that make it more, more special? It is, it is. And, you know, being a triple for uh, this year, it makes it even more special. You know, so passing these uh, two young, reckless golf professionals who are hard to beat. So, uh, yeah, it makes it really special. This year, it's, uh, it's wonderful. But he will have to share the limelight with one of the amateurs, Terry Seeger, who finished the championship as the best performing golfer of the day. Without the aid of um, Mohammed, this competition would be nothing. And as far as I'm concerned, um, for a new golfer and an expert golfer to come up and actually have a great day or great days, because I actually followed Tiger on the first, second and third, and it gives me a much, much encouragement. For Ambassador His Excellency Mohammed El Kabi, this is the start of something bigger as he aims straight at organizing a Qatari Open in the coming year. This Qatar Cup will be on and next year will be Qatar Open because we'll make it bigger and bigger. The price money for the, the pro will be more. The price money for the amateur will be more because we are limited for the amateur. We can't go up more than 500 pounds but the pro unlimited so next year we will make it very nice competition and i am happy this year we invited seven pro from outside or six pro two from sweden and five from senegal aside from its sporting benefits this important tournament is an attractive proposition for the improvement of a new and exciting flavor in the Gambia's diverse tourism product. Golf is a niche tourism product. And in that regard, um, we as a ministry and the Gambia Tourism Board in particular have also sponsored previous tournaments um, working with the Gambia Golf Association. So this is a big plus to our industry. And I think we can only encourage the Qatar ambassador and we hope that other ambassadors who are operating in this country, the other embassies, would also take in that 
in, you know, would follow the lead and also promote similar such initiatives. Well, congratulations to Tiger Fakiba Drame. And with that, we come to the end of this newscast. But before we take leave of you, a quick reminder of our day's main stories. From despair of barrenness to the joy of parenthood, women, women who underwent President Jami's infertility treatment are rejoicing over their newfound status in society thanks to the successes of the Ghanaian Leaders' Alternative Treatment Program. Ruling party supporters in the West Coast region settlement of Sukuta have reaffirmed their loyalty to the party leadership at a mass rally held in the neighborhood of Medina. North Korea has hailed its latest launch for, of a long-range lo rocket, but no one in Western capitals is smiling amid widespread condemnation of Pyongyang for its latest transgression. And third time lucky, Gambia's top golfer Fakeba Drame has led his fellow professionals to a clean sweep of the major awards in the just-ended Qatar Embassy-sponsored golf championship. Well, now, viewers, that was all in this edition of the news. Thanks for the pleasure of your company. Do stay with us, and I'm your presenter, Tenenjite. Have a pleasant evening. Good night.